Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Global Ed Student Chat, the last chat of the 2019-2020 school year. I don't know that any of us would have predicted that when we started in October that we would be joining not from our schools, but from our own homes. The world certainly has changed. And so I'm very excited that today's topic is actually what is school? Because I think that's a conversation and a question many of us has been, have been asking ourselves. What is the essence of school um, as a result of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? If you've never um, been here before, Global Ed Student Chat is a student-led Twitter is chat that school. connects K-12 students around the world to discuss topics and questions related to character education, social justice, and citizenship. Global Ed Student Chat creates opportunities for students to network with others, gain perspective of others, build relationships and new learning partners in a literacy-rich learning environment, to experience social media as a powerful platform for learning, and to establish a positive digital footprint. Thank you everyone so much for joining us. I'm going to turn it over to Darcy, who's going to tell us a little bit about how to get involved in the conversation. Yeah, so if you're watching us on YouTube, you may sign in with a Google account and use the chat to comment or ask a question. If you have Twitter, follow the hashtag, hashtag Global Ed SS Chat to read the ideas, thoughts, and questions shared by others. Use the hashtag to add your thinking and get involved in the conversation. And feel free to share your first name and where in the world you are joining from today. If you ask questions, we will bring them to panel and please remember that the audience for this chat is K-12, so your comments and questions should be appropriate for all ages. Thank you so much, Darcy. I appreciate that. We're very excited to have an expert on panel that I would consider a very good friend of mine, as well as an expert on the topic. And I would Same. love and to, where in the world you are joining to introduce today. Jennifer Williams. Also, I'm very happy to introduce our expert on panel today. Um, recognized as a transformational leader in education, Dr. Jennifer Williams has dedicated herself for 25 years to the field of education through her roles as an education activist, professor, school administrator, literacy specialist, and classroom teacher. She's the author of the IST ebook, Teach Boldly, using EdTech for Social Good, and is the co-founder of Teach SDGs. In her current work as the co-founder and director of Take Action Global Nonprofit Organization. She helps to build schools in refugee camps and remote areas of Africa, and she supports global school programs to empower students and teachers to take action for social good. Jennifer is inspired every day by teachers and students who are catalysts for making the world a better place. And you can connect with Jennifer Williams on Twitter at uh, Jen Williams Edu. Thank you, Erin, and thank you everyone for welcoming me in today. I've been following along with your journey on Twitter and was so anxious to get into this conversation today. So I really am appreciative of all the work you all have done. And especially in, as Jennifer mentioned, these challenging times, keeping it going, being there for people and, and keeping that conversation live. So really happy to be here. Thank you, Jen. We're so excited. We have an incredible line, lineup of student uh, guests, as well as our mighty student team. So why don't we begin uh, with Enora, if you can introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Enora. I am 16. I'm a sophomore and I'm from Salina, Texas. <laughs> Sam, can you go next? Hi, my name is Annie Heat. I'm a grade 11 student from Colonel Carter and I'm from Ontario. I'm so excited to be a part of this conversation today. Hi, I am David and I go to school at Howland High School, which is outside of Buffalo, New York. I am a senior and also very excited for today's chat. 
Hi, I am Ananya, also known as Wonder Ananya, on digital platforms. I am 12 year old and I am a self published author of Save Our Planet. Hi everyone, my name is Erin. I just finished my first year at the University of Toronto, um, Rotman Commerce. I'm also from Ontario. And as much as I'm excited for today's chat, I'm also a little sad it's the last one of the year already. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mimi. I'm joining uh, this chat from Spain. I'm a recent graduate of, of the American School of Madrid there. Hello everyone, I'm Michael Dresick. I am one of the educator leads uh, here at Global Ed Student Chat and I'm joining you from Lakeview, New York, USA. And it's been a wonderful year connecting with all of you. Hi, my name's Emily. I am a senior and I go to Holland High School, which is the same as David outside of Buffalo, New York. And I'm super excited to get this last chat of the year underway. My next. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hi, um, I'm Darcy. Uh, I'm in grade nine and I attend GDCI, which is in the AMDSB school board in Ontario. And as Erin was saying, um, I'm a little bit disappointed this is the last chat of the year, but I'm very excited. So. Thank you. And thank you to all our guests. My name is Jennifer Cassatod. I am the uh, one of the co-founders of the Global Ed Student Chat, along with Lee Castle, who unfortunately couldn't be here. And we are excited to get started. So Sam, why don't you share with uh, everyone what our norms are for the chat, whether you're watching us and participating or whether you're part of the panel. Thank you, Sam. And those norms uh, were co-created with our students and so, so important to making sure that we have a collaborative and respectful dialogue here. So without further ado, Anhee, I'm going to call on you to get started with our first question. So our first question for today is, how has your idea of school changed in the past month? I can start right. things off. I guess. Um, I feel like for me, the two biggest things um, that have changed when I think about school is um, the amount of like flexibility I have in my schedule. And also like um, realizing like that school is not just about education, but also about like there's a big social aspect that I kind of took for granted. Um, you know, I love being able to wake up every day and um, create my own schedule. It just makes my day more balanced and a lot less stressful. And it gives me times to do things I really love and enjoy to do. Um, and I, during school, didn't really realize um, how much I miss collaborating with my friends, like learning with my friends and like going to events, school events with my friends. And I feel like a struggle with um, online school is the teacher and the students really have to push make that connection to make learning more collaborative. Um, so that's my take on how schools change. I agree with that. I think the biggest challenge for me is accepting that I'm still in school. Um, <laughs> after I finished first semester, I decided to take some summer courses online. So I'm still, I guess, I still need to do my homework. I still need to submit assignments and such, but it definitely feels different. Um, and one of the, I think, difficulties is that putting, I guess, giving a routine for myself and continuing with that to, so that I can get all my tasks done has been challenging, but also all the flexibility and time has made me more motivated, I think, to get started on the work and such. For me, I've developed a very deep appreciation for school because um, 
in school, I can interact with other students and we kind of fill each other's um, gaps of knowledge, um, whether that's on a particular subject or whatever it may be. Um, and I think I appreciate my teachers a lot more because not having them there for every um, kind of lesson has uh, taught me to teach myself. Um, which is kind of difficult at times. So I definitely miss school and appreciate it a lot more than I used to before. For me, I kind of realized that school doesn't really have to be, you go into a huge building with hundreds of students. It's kind of, it's whenever, I feel like school is kind of whenever you're learning new, um, new information. And I know that a lot of people, like ever since um, social isolation started, people kind of stopped doing school because they're like, oh, I'm not in a building. I don't have to learn or anything, but it's, that's really not the case. We're still, um, we're still supposed to be like learning in classes and everything. So yeah, school, I think it's just, like I said, whenever you're, you're able, whenever you're able to learn new information, I feel like anything surrounding that can be considered as school. I um, also agree with Emily. Uh, I do have like, I guess something that I've talked about, about a couple of, our, of my friends about because I was wondering what their opinion on what this was too. So it wouldn't just be me, it'd be like a bunch of people that I um, like all had their added opinion and something that they're wondering, and this is different for every school and stuff, but uh, they're wondering like for other districts, do you guys um, have a lot of teacher interactions or do you have a lot of website interactions? Because in our school, probably five out of my six classes I take are just teachers giving us websites to do. And we have, unless there's Zooms, when we have Zoom meetings or we can email the teachers, um, we actually have no teacher face-to-face -face besides the Zooms. And a lot of kids are saying that they, they struggle with the emailing because it's not the same as face-to-face. -face. And that's the one part that I can definitely agree that's different for me is we don't have the face-to-face -face with teachers as often. Um, so it's harder because if, say, you're really successful on like a project or something and you get to one stupid little question like that, um, and that's bothering you, you have to email your teacher and they might not, might not get back to you right away. So that's the big thing. I was, I, I was wondering, because this is different for other schools, and I'm guessing it's not just the same in our school. But if anyone else wants to just throw that out or maybe see how, how if that's affecting them. Yeah, I found something very similar happening here all the way across the ocean in Spain. And that might be because I'm also a senior and we're kind of expected to um, kind of be given materials and then self-direct a little bit. Um, but yeah, I've been finding a lot that it's mostly just, I will receive a website, uh, something to, to complete, and then it won't really be a lot of teacher interactions, which is something I totally miss from school. I, I really, really miss interacting with teachers and students alike. And I'm like, that's something that, uh, that, I mean, uh, connecting this back to the question, which is just like, something that's completely different is I don't have like that sense of community anymore. And I really, I do miss that a lot. And uh, I think that I'll really be, um, I'll really be more aware of that when eventually things go back to normal. Yeah, so like Mimi said, to me, it's become a lot less of working on anything creative and a lot of more completion work. So filling out a Google doc that they've given us or just going to a website and doing a chemistry lab. So it's become way less about creativity or actually learning and just filling in the blank more of. So there's a lot of people, especially in our school that are just sharing the answers and not actually learning anything. So it's become more of, as long as you get it done and turn it in on time, you're going to pass and everything's fine. So. It's just become way more stressful and not really any fun or any learning just because they're not giving us anything that we get to use our own imagination for. Yeah, I've been finding a lot of things are, my, my school has been really good because we have, every teacher is required to have at least one um, digital chat with students per week. Um, most teachers are giving out doc work to do along with those video chats. Um, some of them do not live but video lessons that we can go through so I found mine's pretty good and laid back with um, 
uh, due dates and everything just because well, some of the kids are still working and working more hours now and I found my school's been pretty flexible with that and I'm thankful for that and I also realized that you guys couldn't hear me before so hi I'm Sam um, I'm in grade 9 and I go to Listowel High School and I've been with the chat since the beginning So for me, earlier the school was just a routine, like getting up early and going to school. But now we have realized that it's not just a routine. It is as important as breathing. Thank you for that, everybody. And uh, one of the reasons why we invited our guest expert on panel, uh, Dr. Jennifer Williams here, was due to her just uh, wide and vast experiences uh, with schools on a global scale. So um, I, I'm just gonna transition it over to her and, and just let her kind of tap into what some of you have said as well as some of the things that she's thinking uh, from her perspective with working with schools around the globe. Well, I, I just, I, I mean, I absolutely applaud you all for coming together and sharing your ideas. As an educator, I would love to just have my days like this, just hearing from you all as students. And I think that um, our teachers love to hear your voices and hear your opinions. So thank you for sharing those. Um, I think like hearing your thoughts on this first question, there's this theme of flexibility that is kind of sticking in my mind. A lot of you mentioned that word, you're needing to be flexible and there's not a lot of consistency. I think David, you mentioned that all of these different programs are doing different things. Even within your own school, you have some classes that are doing it one way. I'm seeing the same thing. I have my three kids at home. Uh, my oldest is in college and then my middle child's in high school and then Grace is in middle school. And they have completely different programs. And even as a family, we're having to adjust to that. And, and so I think as educators, we're thinking, hmm, what is this something that we can learn from? Can we work with our students to customize programs for them? Um, also something that I've seen when we're, we're talking about what is school now is what I feel like you all have been modeling and what you've already been doing in teacher and student coming together as co-learners and thinking through the process together and everyone sharing feedback and ideas um, equally. Like everyone's ideas are valued in this space as exampled in your norms, which I think a lot of other Twitter chats might want to learn from after seeing this. Uh, but I think that's what, uh, those are the things I hope we take away from this experience and, and move ahead. Um, and then my final thing, as I know we're going to move on to the next question, is around creativity, which I think is something, I mean, that could be a whole other chat, but Anora brought that up on creativity. And, and I've seen with my children and a lot of other students and youth, they're like, hyper creative right now. And if they're not getting it in their own class in their school, I feel like they're coloring their hair and they're out on their driveways drawing with chalk and they're just doing these amazing things. And I'm just like, yes, that is learning. And so I think teachers are watching that and seeing what students are choosing. Like that's the real choice here, what they're choosing to do in their, in their off time. So, so thank you for sharing your ideas. Yes, thank you. And thank you for bringing in that creativity piece. Uh, we also have some comments on the YouTube channel um, from Evan uh, from Beluga saying, uh, how do you think schools can make the learning experience more social, both during the pandemic and when everyone returns to school? Um, great questions. I know when we brainstorm these questions, you know, that was how kind of we're going to wrap up this chat is what more what questions would you still have? And, and we'll examine that through the slow chat uh, all through the month of May. Um, I got we've got. Um, Mrs. Poncio is here from Texas, uh, from CSD SWAT, uh, uh, the SWAT team, and saying the interaction is huge. Um, and another uh, student, someone on YouTube saying that they missed the interaction, but they were always self-directed to learn. So are those students a little bit more ahead right now, those self-directed learners? Um, and how, as educators, can we support the people that need uh, more guidance? Um, and, and, a, and a really uh, interesting comment from JM on the YouTube chat. It might be worthwhile to talk about how people with ADHD or other learning disorders might be positively affected by the lack of long classes. So just uh, lots of uh, diverse experiences from all types of learners. Um, so thank you to everybody tuning in on, on YouTube. Uh, we'll continue the conversation over there and on Twitter and, and as we move along into the next question. 
I think that we that's a really great transition actually to the next question, um, which and hate, I'm going to get to you in a second. So, David, I'd like to respond to to your question in our district. We are attempting to, or we are trying to have teachers have a live meet with students. So period one would be on Monday, period two would be on Tuesday in order to have that, that interaction. But I know there are just lots of obstacles to that, right? Teachers who aren't quite comfortable with the technology, um, people, you know, shifting the, the, the whole shifting your mindset from, you know, how do you teach online versus in, in a class, you know, where work, worksheets are not you know, an option anymore. So um, thank you for asking that question. And, and hey, if you could bring us into question number two, that would be awesome. Our second question is, what are the biggest challenges and greatest benefits you're facing with remote learning? And I would like to start off this question by saying that I think that the way we learn is never going to go back to how it was. Um, I think there's definitely going to be some changes for me, I'm a very extroverted person, so it's really hard to just sit on my own at my desk every single day and do um, homework just w without a teacher because I love that interaction. And I also find it kind of uh, disappointing that I'm not allowed to receive as much um, information with the detail that I did before in class. I think now um, our teachers are just trying to I get across the main points of that particular subject, but there's also uh, the benefits of, um, you know, working at my own pace and getting things done uh, at my own pace. And um, I've also uh, learned things outside of the curriculum that I think will help me in the future. So having that the time to do that is definitely valuable for me. Yeah, I really miss uh, that too, that connection with teachers and like being at school and, and all of that. I'm really um, immersed in like the ASM community. Uh, I'm always doing like things around the school. So being without that is really odd for me, especially since I've been at this specific school since I was like 10 years old. So it's so strange for the first time to be without that sense of community. Um, but a benefit that I found is that um, someone mentioned it for last question, that, that self-direction, I think. Uh, the, the ability to choose what to do and when and uh, how to spend. A, I have a lot, of, a lot more free time so I can explore new things. And, and that's just a, a silver lining, I guess. Definitely to add on to what Mimi said, I think um, a lot of people brought up the very difficult challenges that we're facing, such as, you know, being motivated and um, feeling the lack of community and such. But I think a lot of us as students don't realize the amount of benefit that this is giving us. Um, I think it's when all of this is done, we're going to have grown so much as individuals um, and we can be so much more independent in this time. And also with what Jem mentioned about creativity, we really maybe in our lives like will not get, hopefully, another global pandemic like this, but also, an opportunity to really take the time to start on a new project or try something new or really um, get to know our family members even better and such. So I think um, we'll realize the silver lining and the benefits that came out of this um, after it's done. Yeah, I think that was said perfectly. Um, I know the biggest challenge I face with um, remote learning is the lack of like hands-on learning because I'm someone who learns from um, doing things and having hands-on activities. And um, for me, it can be hard to like draw conclusions um, by just reading text or watching, some, watching someone else do it, which is unfortunate because that's the easiest way to teach online, you know, as we were saying earlier. And because of this, like I had to take a step back all the time in my lectures and like pause and write things down and ask questions. And um, it's actually helpful because I think it's helping me um, find new ways to learn and new ways to understand, which I think will make me um, a better learner in the long run. But it is sometimes a downside just because um, sometimes it's hard to take that step back and reflect on how you learn, but it's something that I think is needed. So I think it's also a little bit of a silver lining too. 
Yeah, for me, something that's hard is that learning is already hard enough because there's so many different preferences and different ways of learning for everyone. And so in my geometry class, my teacher sent out an announcement in Google Classroom asking if we would rather her post the assignments every single week or just post all of them at once. And more people wanted it all at once, which was really stressful to look at and was really hard for me to figure out what was due when. So that's a little bit of a hard thing, like figuring out how things are working for everyone else. But something that is good is I've had more time to work on certain school projects like my digital portfolio and practicing all my instruments. So yes, I agree with everyone that's, uh, that said stuff. And I think this is really based on the individual when it comes to challenges and benefits. Um, I actually, when I like started this, I, can, I do really well with the individual learning and stuff. So this was fairly easy to get adjusted to this because I think this is a benefit. I can take as much time as I need to get work done and stuff like that. Um, but then I was looking at it more instead of the school part, I was looking at it as like a whole general big thing. So for example, I'm gonna, I have some facts I wrote down. According to the Federal, Federal Communications Commission, a report finds that approximately 19 million Americans, which is 6% of the population, still lacks uh, in access to fixed broadband service at threshold speeds, which would be internet, which is how this is all running. Um, so there are people that are struggling because they don't have the internet. Uh, another thing is I was looking at line on, on an article and in Georgia, there was one county in Georgia where they, they provide, the school provides 90,000 lunches and food, uh, food stuff to kids, uh, meals and stuff like that to kids that um, I didn't even think about that, but that, that could definitely impact kids. Um, and then another part too was sometimes like if people or kids don't, are not as great with their home life, their school is a sh like a sanctuary for them so they can get away. And that's their time to just forget some of that negative uh, stuff that goes on at home or whatever. And so I didn't, these were things I didn't think of originally, but when I was looking it up, um, athletics too, they're all things that kids are going to get affected by. And then I had one last little quote that I saw that was kind of interesting because this is from a different perspective. Um, since I'm a senior, I have to look ahead towards college. And there was this online like anonymous thing where it was like uh, teachers voicing what they thought was going to be a struggle for this whole pandemic. And this college professor wrote, um, I believe that the university will use this as an opportunity to remove all face-to-face -face teaching of postgraduate students effectively destroying my role and the style of teaching that I love. I expect to either be forced into online teaching or to be made redundant within the year. So this is something that, I, I mean, this could be like not true, but some of these professors and teachers and students, everyone has different thoughts or fears about what this is gonna, I think it's here to stay now that we're uh, experimenting with it. So it's, just, it's a wide variety of things that people are thinking of. So the benefits with remote learning can be like we can get organized like we can make a timetable when the work is due and if we don't know any project we can ask our family members but the challenges are if anyone doesn't know how to use the technology they can't just go in the meetings yeah a lot of it would be hard for those people who don't have the technology or don't really have the knowledge of the technology i know in my school or my board we every kid gets a ipad in grade seven so everybody should be kind of familiar with that um, in our school we got ipads in grade nine um, I don't think the older grades got anything, but I know that our board was also, if you were having troubles with technology, they had a web page where you can ask for a Chromebook and they'll get it, they'll bring one to your house if you needed it. So I, my board's been doing pretty well with that. Um, I know some, I know of some kids that are in different boards aren't having the greatest time with the transition but I've been finding personally that I like it better, especially when I'm getting all my work at the start of the week, I can plan out my week, what I'm doing when, and just have, the, have my plan in my mind and know how much time everything's gonna take. And I find that better, but I know a lot of people don't like that.
I'd love to jump in here. Has everybody had a chance to talk? Great. So um, something that just stands out to me as you all are responding, and again, I'm just loving listening and just kind of learning from you all, but you all are leading with empathy as you respond. And so you share on what you feel like other perspectives and experiences might be, and then you kind of weave in your own and then pull it back out to, to others, which I think is, I mean, that's just a beautiful lesson for us all to learn. Um, as I've, you know, I was kind of thinking through the challenges I've had in, in all of this, and I've been teaching online, so I teach at the university, and I've been teaching online, and I've been in this type of setting for several years. And for me, um, in my previous work in K-12, where I was at the university, I was in a classroom. And so being able as a learner and as a teacher to receive feedback, like constant feedback, so I'm able to watch the body language of my students and, um, you know, kind of give that pause for thinking. And when you move into virtual spaces, that opportunity can be challenging. And so having to think through how can I request feedback on how my students are doing, um, how are they progressing through their work, but also how are they feeling about it? So just having to be creative and doing that but also watching you, it seems like you all are taking that step for your teachers and saying, I'm going to advocate for myself and I'm going to come to you and say, maybe this isn't the right way, or I might need a little bit extra help or clarity in this area. So I'd love to encourage like if teachers and students are watching today, but to have students do that more, because I know when I have students say, I just, I just need a little extra help. Um, then I'm like, yes, I'm there. I'm, I'm ready to, to, to be there. I, sometimes we just don't know. So, so thank you for modeling that and, and doing that in your own classes. And our final question for today is what makes school different from remote schooling? Um, I agree with what Darcy said as her answer to the last one in the sense that we don't have the hands-on experiences anymore that are really crucial to a lot of people's learning. Like I know for me personally, I'm in AP chemistry and it's really difficult and annoying to try to do a lab online um, with like, you have to pour chemicals into flasks and everything. And it's just, it's really difficult to actually get something out of it because in college, I'm gonna be a biochem major. So I kind of, I miss doing all the lab work that I feel like I'm going to need the experience for when I move on to college. Um, but it's not only for chemistry, it's for, I don't know, like a lot of, you can't do like, like for English per se, like say you have, you're doing like a play unit and you can't, you don't, for our school at least, like sometimes we'll act out the plays. And I know that helps keep people comprehend a little better what's going on, but we can't really do that now with like, with it being effective. So uh, uh, I feel like the hands-on experiences is definitely the biggest difference between remote learning and actual school. Yeah, for me, it's definitely a lot of the hands-on, especially with classes like chemistry. And a big thing for me is there's been no collaboration in our classes. We haven't had any making presentations with groups or working on essays together or even editing essays. We've done absolutely nothing together. So it kind of makes you feel like while we're going through this pandemic and figuring out how to do things online, it kind of makes you feel like you're alone in doing your work because you're not having that interaction or making any of your schoolwork easier. And so that's definitely been something that's harder for moving into remote learning. Definitely, I think obviously the biggest part is the community aspect that's different from remote and school learning. But I think um, something that's made me really happy and positive these days is a lot of schools, whether it be um, like actual school or a lot of like extracurricular activities that people have been doing have been doing calls like this where it's um, whether it be on zoom and such and they have been I guess still trying to keep the community strong and make sure everyone is still intact with each other making sure everyone's still um, mentally well as also being physically healthy so I think that kind of support um, even though it's not in person still exists amongst groups so I think that's really good that's really great um, but another really big difference I think between remote schooling and physical schooling is the ability for a student to I guess figure out their new routine and figure out their um, day and I think that's a really great learning opportunity for students as well 
Yeah, I completely agree. And I hope that this builds uh, more support systems like that kind of uh, to continue even after, because I think that having things like mental health check-ins is really important, even when we can all see each other every day. Um, another thing I think that uh, is really missing in this remote learning experience is kind of a, a more tactile approach to learning. Um, like Darcy was saying a few questions back, how she is uh, more of a kinesthetic learner. I feel like we're really missing kind of all of the other types of learning that we usually can do during school that we can't do because we're not physically with people and uh, we're not like that. For me personally, it's discussion-based learning. I learn a lot from speaking to people and having conversations. And uh, I feel like I can't wait to get back to school so I could just have like a, a discussion like this almost. Yeah, I actually agree with that. Um, for me, the biggest difference is like a teacher teaching versus a website teaching. So at school, they wouldn't be using anywhere close to the amount of websites we're using right now, like Khan Academy, IXL, those types of websites. Um, now it's just every le or most lessons are going to be like based on a website. So if you don't understand it from the website, you'd have to go back to the teacher. Whereas in school, um, for me, it's the teacher is constantly teaching. She does the work and then, or she or he does the work and then they give us homework and then we just do that routine type of thing where now it's a website, um, I, I feel like like there are certain classes that teachers will uh, do the actual teaching themselves. But right now it kind of just feels like we're in a way, we're almost separated because we're not like the teacher and I, because we're not like one-on-one -on -one all the time. I know in elementary school, like in our elementary school, the, the teachers are actually required to be on an hour, like actually teaching a lesson with the kids, which is really cool. And I wish we could kind of do that, honestly. Um, but that's for me the biggest thing is just and then answering questions because again email is not the same as just right there in person um or zoom it is still for me i like being there like one-on-one -on -one where i can just talk to the teacher and stuff so i mean that that's just my biggest difference uh compared to normal school yeah i definitely uh i completely agree with that i feel like for me personally like besides the hands-on learning as other people have mentioned the number one thing that um, is definitely the social aspect. Um, I miss being able to like hang out with my friends and um, have that sense of community and but also just like collaborate in class with my friends. You know, as Mimi said, it's like a big way to like get further in your learning um, to hear other people's perspectives and kind of learn off of that. And that's something that, you know, teachers and students really have to make an effort during this time to like um, connect us together so then we can collaborate and learn together. and. It's not just so individual because um, interacting with other people is, I think, just as important as learning the actual material. So I feel like um, the more we can, uh, the more effort we can put in to connect each other and collaborate with each other, even if it is online, is very beneficial and something that should be taken like very seriously. Um, I agree with everything that's been said so far. Um, I know there's a lot of debate between people of whether or not the teaching styles that um, have always been in place are still valid today um, in the 21st century with technology and all. Um, and I think that the classroom and the teacher learning one-on-one -on -one is going to be here for a long time. It's very valid. and this uh, pandemic really proved that. Um, I also want to say that what makes school different from remote schooling at home is in your house, you don't really have that experience that you get at school. Education is an experience, um, not just a mandatory, mandatory thing that you have to do in your life. It's a whole experience that you have. And I think it's something that when you're finished, you can look back on and reflect on really the good memories you've had and interactions with different people that made you who you are. And that is not something you'd necessarily get at home in front of a screen. I agree with everyone. I, will, I would like to add on. So while attending school, we meet our friends, we talk to teachers, and we also play sports in school. But in remote learning, 
we can't see our friends or teachers face to face. Um, we cannot play any sports with our friends. So I miss group activities. Thank you, Ananya, and uh, thank you to everyone for your very poignant um, and direct and honest comments. There's lots of really good uh, chat happening in the YouTube um, on the YouTube chat. Um, Patrick McMillan is, and several other teachers or participants are talking about how we really need to rethink what school looks like when we go back in September. Um, there's also um, talk, uh, picking up on your point, Anora, about mental health and how people are doing and how important that is, um, as well as looking at what is the role of teacher in remote learning and what does collaboration actually look like? Does it just mean you know, um, assign something to someone. So thank you to those participating in the chat. Thank you to our panelists. Jennifer, could I ask you to just synthesize or bring us your final thoughts on that question? Yeah, I'd love to. And, and again, thank you so much for doing this and creating this space where we so are in need of hearing from our students on these topics as everything is changing. And uh, so for me right now, I'm just kind of trying to observe and reflect as much as I can because we have been in our traditional schooling settings for now over 100 years. I mean, that's a long, long time. And to have this drastic of a change happen in just a few weeks, like this is nothing any of us have ever seen before. So um, what are the lessons learned? What are our students asking for? What I'm seeing, there are things bubbling up and even themes of what you're sharing today. So um, things for me that are bubbling up are that humans are social beings and we're all gonna want to socialize in a different way, but I, I keep hearing all of you in some way talk about that. You miss your friends or you miss being in a space where your teacher can give you feedback um, in the moment. So, so thinking of that and um, Connection, like I think connection is something that's standing out for me. Um, we need to find ways to connect better, more efficiently, making sure all voices are included. Creating, so how can we create more? And, um, and then finally, I think that we're also seeing that caring for others is just something that we need to consider to um, continue to find ways to prioritize. So. What are the needs of others? Right now in this world, I'm on calls like this a lot. And so I'll be talking to someone in Singapore and Pakistan and Tanzania and Texas, and we're all going through this, but in different ways. So learning from others, thinking how we can grow together and taking those lessons learned with us as we go into whatever this new form of school is going to look like. So. So I definitely applaud you all and please keep it up, keep talking, keep sharing. And I appreciate you inviting me in. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jennifer Williams and to all of the students who have joined today. Um, this all uh, wouldn't be possible uh, without the work behind the scenes of the Global Ed Student Chat team and the founder, Lee Castle. Um, she brings us all together and helps uh, steer the ship. So big thanks uh, to her. I know she couldn't be here for this live meeting. Um, thank you to all who have chimed in on YouTube or on Twitter. Uh, let's keep the conversation going. Uh, thank you for joining us here at this Tweet and Talk. Um, also, big thanks to our students who joined this month from New York, USA, Emily and David, from Texas, USA, Enora, from Ontario, Canada, by way of India, and Anya, from Madrid, Spain, uh, Mimi, and uh, to our student team of Global Ed Student, ed, Global ed student Chat leaders, Darcy, Anahit, uh, Nieti, who also added on the YouTube, thank you, Nieti, uh, Aaron, and Sam. Uh, again, thank you to our expert, Dr. Jennifer Williams, coming to us from Florida, USA. Let's keep the conversation going by answering our slow chat for the rest of the month. Please be sure to use the hashtag GlobalEdSSChat uh, so that our team can interact with you. And please follow us on social media or at our website at GlobalEdStudentChat.com or on Twitter at GlobalEdSSChat. Um, Jennifer, how can we connect with you or how can uh, people watching connect with you? I'd love uh, to connect on Twitter. So at Jen Williams EDU, you can find me there, send me a message. Um, I'm also on my website. So which is www.jenwilliamsedu.com. Excellent, thank you. And this would be this, uh, the, the point in the uh, wrap up where we would tell you to be on the lookout for next month's chat, but this is the final 
tweet and talk of the school year. So be on the lookout for what Global Ed SS Chat and our student chat will be up to for next school year. I'm sure our team will have some great ideas in the works. Please note that we are currently recruiting members for our student leadership team and our social media ambassador program. Feel free to DM us for more information. Thanks again for joining everyone and we will see you online. Thank you everyone.